In the previous lessons, I've shown you some of the things that can be done with implicit objects. Now, these objects are called implicit because they are instantiated and ready to be used. You don't have to do anything to get them ready. There are lots of other things that you can do with these implicit objects, but you need to be able to look them up in the API reference. To do that, you need to know what kind of objects they are. This JSP lists the implicit objects by name and then lists the classes and all the superclasses of each one. Here at the top of the Java code of this page is an array holding the names of the references to the implicit objects. This second array holds the addresses of the implicit objects. Now this loop executes once for each member of the object list. This output statement creates a line that holds the reference name of an implicit object. Like all objects in Java, a call to get class returns a class object that holds all the information about the class of that object. You can find out all sorts of things about the class, but in this program we just want to know what the superclasses are named. This inner loop executes as long as the class definition is not null. Inside this loop, the full name of the class is printed and a call is made to the getSuperClass method to return the next class up in the hierarchy. When the class variable returns null, we have just shown the name of the object class and there's no more inheritance to be seen. This is the page produced from the JSP code. Here is the out object. It's the one that writes the code to the HTML page. You can see that this is an implementation of a special form of the java.io.writer class. That gives you methods to write characters, streams, in several different ways. The request and response objects are a little bit special. They are written to serve just this one purpose, writing to and reading from the remote web browser. There's quite a bit that can be done with them. It would be a good idea for you to review the methods of these two in the API documentation. Now you recall that a user logged into an application has his or her own session object, so each user can be treated differently according to the information that you've stored in there. The application and config objects contain predefined values that are the same for every user logged into the application. The page object is special and can be very handy in more complicated JSP pages. If you have a JSP with several different methods defined in different sections of the code, you can use this page to address them. The page object can be used very much like the this keyword in a regular Java class. Notice the inheritance. This is actually a reference to the compiled object back to itself. So you can use it to refer to anything that isn't specifically prohibited by access limitations. The page context object provides very low level access into the inner workings of things. If you ever find yourself in need of access to something down inside that's sort of special, this may be your way in. Well, that's it for implicit objects. In the next lesson, we'll be digging into some of the syntax and the special tags in the Java server page.